Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again it is time for the Monday Q&As, and I apologize if these are going to be up later today than usual. I didn't have time to film them till this morning. So let's get this started. First question. Myth or fact? Does sex before a fight or strength competition weaken you or decrease your testosterone? IG Muhammad Ali would have stayed for six weeks prior to a fight. No, it's just not relevant. Just because some athlete has done something or followed some sort of mumbo-jumbo or rigorous ritual that they do doesn't mean that that contributed in any physiological way. Now, it might psychologically help somebody because if you convince yourself in your mind as a champion that if you don't have sex or that you pray to Torgos, the giant turtle who lives in Lake Somerville in Texas before a fight and you really and truly believe believe deeply that that is going to improve your performance, it will improve your performance. So it doesn't matter what little ritual you follow, it's, it's about self-programming. But as far as the data goes, no. In fact, we could argue that frequent sex could slightly boost testosterone levels. And the only reason you should abstain might be maybe the night before a competition or the morning, particularly the morning of a competition. I recommend don't have sex on a training day. If you're going to lift 9 a.m. don't have sex at 7 a.m. that day because it will drain energy from you. It will use up focus unless you are laying there completely still and calm and letting her do all the work. It's not going to help you. It's certainly going to hurt you in that sense. But even the night before, it would be fine for training. But I would recommend that the night before a competitive event, you don't even have sex unless you go back to what I just described because you're expending too much possible energy that you need to be conserving for the competitive event because it could make a 1% difference. But as far as the, the testosterone levels and, and stretching it out days before, no, or weeks before, no, absolutely not. It, it will not benefit you positively in any way other than placebo effect and self-programming. But you could convince yourself on a deep level that something else completely unrelated would give you that benefit. You would still get the psychological benefits. All right, next question. Is DAA, which is deaspartic acid, a natural compound, if one were to take it, would you consider them natural? Why or why not? Guys, honestly, I, I get so sick of the natural thing. I honestly don't give a fuck who's natural or who isn't. It's purely mental masturbation for you to try to figure out if you're natural or not. If an item is natural bodybuilding, it only exists in the bodybuilding world. Natural means nothing outside of competitive bodybuilding. It has zero meaning for a non-competitor. It has whatever meaning you give it. And for a competitor... It is defined in the rules of your federation. So I don't know if DAA is banned or not. If it's banned, it would be fucking retarded because it doesn't do much. If anything, there's no data showing it boosts performance. And the data showing that it might boost testosterone is inconclusive. You've got some studies that don't show it and some that do. So that makes me skeptical of it working at all. But there have been people who've gotten gynecomastia from it. So it does seem to boost estrogen or some sort of estrogen to testosterone ratios in some men. So if someone really wants to manipulate their testosterone, it seems absurd to me that they would use a product like this. It seems to have some of the potential side effects of testosterone without the benefits and cost just as much, if not more. So it's just absurd and sitting around worrying about if something like this makes you natural or not is really just absurd and stupid in my opinion nobody cares if you define yourself as natural or not i don't care i hope no one else cares the whole term needs to go away it should be of do i use anabolic steroids or don't i do i use hgh or don't i the whole uh, having anything to do with the word natural is just absurd other than i guess in the context of natural bodybuilding competition but as far as does this make you natural or not? I don't know. I don't care. But if you use it, it makes you probably stupid or naive because it's, uh, it seems to be a virtually useless product that has side effects for some people and not one single proven benefit that I can tell. Sorry about that rant, but that's just how I feel about uh, silly products like this. And no, it's not naturally occurring in your body. It's a synthetic compound as far as I'm aware. Okay, next question. Mercury poisoning from omega-3 supplements hypothetically possible but highly unlikely particularly the algae based ones you have zero chance and even with the fish oil ones you usually but not always are from salmon out there from tuna maybe depends on how they're purified 
but the salmon oil ones, there can be traces of mercury in there, but you would have to take a lot of them to have that negative effect. In fact, you would have to be taking enough of them that you would be having other health effects that are more immediate and more quick in their negative effect on your body. Because we know that, say with fish oil caps, more than about 10 grams of fish oil a day. There's plenty of data on this. Alan Aragon has put out data on this. Very good current literature showing that 10 or more fish oil caps a day start to suppress immune function. So the negative, the health negatives start to outweigh any benefits from the EPA and DHA and something like that when you start hitting 10 or more grams of it per day, so 10 capsules. Now, depending upon their mercury content, you might need 20, 30, 50 of those capsules a day, which would compromise your immune system in the long term and cause other bigger issues before I would think mercury would really start to even be a, a remote concern there. So one of those things is hypothetically possible, but unlikely. All right, guys, so that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it has been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time in part two.